Atlantic Seacoast Repertory Company. Some of them are put, being on stage for the very first time, and some of them have spent their lives there, and we're going to let you decide who's who and what's what. We're delighted that you're here to share this experience with us. You, we would like you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Eugene O'Neill, Seacoast Rep, and all of us. Thanks for coming. Sorry, I didn't hear you. 
was off to another world. <laughs> what were you uh, planning to do with yourself today? You gonna go to the beach with Milton? That silly skirt party? He's not going because Muriel isn't. I bet he's got a date with her somewhere. Shut up, mate. <laughs> well, I thought I'd just stay around the house this morning anyway, Pa. How come he set up firecrackers, eh? No. I don't believe in celebrating the 4th of July. All this lying talk about liberty. There's no liberty. The, the land of the free, the home of the brave. The home of the slave is what they ought to call it. The wage slave ground under the heel of the capitalist class. I'm starving, crying for bread for his children. All I guess is a stone. Fourth of July is nothing but a, a stupid farce. Well, Richard, them are mighty strong words. I don't think I'd repeat those sentiments outside the bosom of the family here. They'll put you in jail. Throw away the key. Well, let them put me in jail. Well, how about the freedom of speech in the Constitution, then? That must be a farce, too. No, you can celebrate your 4th of July. I'll celebrate the day when the people bring out the guillotine again, and I see Pierpont Morgan being driven by in a tumble. Tie that bull outside, will ya? You gotta get a punch in the nose for talking that way on the 4th. Wait till we get him down to Yale. We'll take it out of him. Oh, Yale. What is Yale? Well, you'll find out what. You know, Richard, I found that I've had to listen to, to at least one stump speech every 4th. I only hope getting your extra strong one right after breakfast will let me off the rest of the day. <laughs> What's that book you got there? Carlisle's French Revolution. Oh, darn fine book. Glad you're reading it. What, have you read it? Oh, I've been a newspaper owner. Can't really get out of opening a book now and again. This isn't a great book, Pa. The part about Marat and Maribel and Robespierre. Never you mind, Robespierre, young man. You tell me right this minute where you've hidden those books. They were on the shelf in your wardrobe, and now you've hidden them somewhere else. You go right upstairs and get them and bring them down to your car. Never mind him getting them now, Wesley. We'll waste the whole darn morning over those books. And anyway, he has a right to keep the library to himself. Uh, that is, if the books aren't too, uh, what are the books, Richard? Well, I'll tell you if he won't. There were two books there by that awful Oscar Wilde that was flung in jail for heaven knows what. Oh, he, he committed bigamy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? I guess I ought to know. Well, yes, a fellow at college told me. Seems his father was in England when this wild character was pinched. And he remembers his mother asking his father about it, and he told her he committed bigamy. Well, I wouldn't put it past him, or anything else. And, and there were two books there by that Bernard Shaw, you know, the one that wrote that play that was so vile they wouldn't even let it play in New York. And plays by Ibsen, and, and some poems by Swine. Something. Poems and ballads by Swinburne, Ma. Hmm. He tells the truth about real love. Love, all I can say from reading here and there that if he wasn't thrown in jail with that wild person, he ought to have been. Why, some of the things were so indecent, I just couldn't read them. And, and the last one there was uh, a, a long poem, the, the Rube something. What one is that? The Rubaiyat of Omer Kaya. Mm -hmm. That's the best of all, Ma. Oh, I see, I've read that. I've got a copy of it down in the office right now. Some fine things in it, seems to me true things. I don't see how Isn't I it a great book, Pa? Remember this? A book of verses. Beneath the bow, jug of wine, loaf of bread, and thou. Beside me, singing in the wilderness. Hey, Pa, look who's coming down the walk. The old man McCumber. Dave? Yeah. Now, what the thunder Lily, is that damn old? Let's go to our baby's office and ask you get rid of him just the second you can. Well, I'm going to beat it just in time for the 820 draw. I'm going to catch that, too. I can't imagine what. But I must be to complain about something. I only wish I didn't have to be pleasant to the old buzzer, but he's about the most valuable advertiser I've got. But tell him to go to hell anyway. He needs that ad more than you. <laughs> you better clear out, Dick. I'm not, uh, I'm not through with you yet. You come back as soon as he's gone, you hear? All right, Pa. Sid, you better clear out, too. Come on, Dave. We'll go out and help Tommy suffer. Well, hello, Dave. What good wind blows you around this glorious fourth? Good morning. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. How about a cigar? Never forget it. I never smoke. Oh, is that so? So I am. Well, I'll smoke alone, then. I'll come to the point at once. I regret to say it's disagreeable. Disgraceful would be nearer the truth, and it concerns your son, Richard. Oh, come on now, Dave. I'm sure Richard hasn't done anything. Oh, and, and I'm positive he has. I have proof of everything in his own handwriting. Well, just what is it you're charging him with? Of being dissolute and blasphemous? Of deliberately attempting to corrupt the morals of my young daughter, Muriel? I'm going to have to call you a liar, Dave. Oh? Uh -oh. Well, my wife discovered these in one of Muriel's spirit drawers hidden under the underwear. <laughs> the wrong of his handwriting, you can't deny it. Anyway, Muriel's confessed to me he wrote them. Now you read them and then call me a liar. 
Evidently, you've been too busy to take the right care about Richard's bringing up or what he's allowed to read. Though I can't see why his mother failed in her duty. Damned old fool. Can't you see Richard's just a kid who's, who, who, who's at a stage when he's out to rebel against all of so he grabs at everything radical to read so he can pass it on to his elders and his boyfriends and girlfriends just to show what a young hellion he is. Why, at heart, you find Richard's just as big and innocent a kid as Muriel is. Stuff doesn't mean a thing to me. If you think this could corrupt Muriel, then you must think she's easily corrupted. But I'd be willing to bet you she knows a lot more about life than you give her credit for and can guess a stork didn't bring her down your chimney. Now you're insulting my daughter. I'm not insulting her. I'm giving her credit for ordinary good sense. I'd say the same thing about Mildred, who's about the same age. Well, I know nothing about your Mildred, except she's known all over as, as a flirt. Well, I knew you'd prove obstinate, but I never dreamed that you'd have the impudence after reading those papers to claim your son was, was innocent of all wrongdoing. Well, no. Well, just what did you dream I do, Dave? Do what it's your duty to do as a citizen to protect other people's children. Take and give him a, a hiding that he'd remember to the, to the last day of his life. Dave, I've had it all about all I can stand from you. You get out, you get out now, unless you want a kick in the rear to help you. You needn't lose your temper. I'm only demanding that you do with your own, but as I've done by mine, I'm punishing Muriel. She's not to be allowed out of the house for a month, and she's to be in bed every night by 8 o'clock sharp. <laughs> Yet... She, she's blameless compared to Dave, I said quite enough of you. Now get out. All right, you didn't need to lay hands on me. I'm going. There, uh, there is one more thing. Here's a letter from uh, Muriel to your son. It makes clear, I think, how she's come to think about him now that her eyes have been opened. I hope he heeds what's inside, for his own sake and for yours. And don't think that you're not going to make you regret the insults you've heaped on me. I'm taking the advertisement for my paper, for my stir out of your paper. And it won't go on again, I tell you, not unless you apologize in writing and promise to punish the truth. I'll see you in hell first. As for your damn old ad, take it out and go to hell. Oh, that's plain bluff. You know you need it. So do I. Well, good day. <laughs> good for you, Matt. You sure gave him hell. A lot of good he'll do. He knows it was just talk. What's this? That I could drink thy veins as wine and eat thy breasts as honey. <laughs> Talk to me any more about it. I don't 
Rosie, how do you think? Did that old idiot McCumber say that about me? Well, you can't exactly blame old idiot, can you, after uh, reading through some of this literature you wished on his innocent daughter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, found those, did he? Yeah. I told her to be careful. Well, maybe it'll do him some good to read the real truth about life and get rid of those old foggy ideas. Well, I'm afraid I have to agree with him, son. Uh, they're hardly fit reading for a young girl. <laughs> Think it over and see if you don't agree with me. I only did it because I liked her, Pa. She's so darn afraid of life. Afraid of her old man. Afraid of people saying this or that about her. Afraid of being in love. Afraid of everything. You know, she's even afraid to let me kiss her. So I thought maybe by reading these things, it, they, are, they are beautiful, though, aren't they, Pa? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I might give her the spunk to lead her own life. Not always be thinking of being afraid. Well, uh, Richard, I'm afraid she's, uh, she's still afraid. Here's a letter that she said to give to you. I guess if I'm going to go to that picnic, I better go upstairs and get rigged out, huh?
understand me, having a cranky old maid around all the time. Oh, what nonsense you talk. Lily Miller, I've no patience with you when you go on like that. What time's it getting to be, do you know? Quarter past six. say our souls are wrong. There's plenty of other fish in the sea. Hello, Richard. Getting hungry, I suppose. I'm not hungry, Mom. That's all you have to think of. Oh. Food. <laughs> well, I must say I've never known you to hang back at mealtime. What was that he was saying about other fish? 
Commissioner C. But he's through with Muriel now. Oh, she's through with him. That's what he really means. The idea of sending a nice girl like that things out of those indecent books. <laughs> well, I think that finishes our table. Nothing much more for us to do but wait for the men folk to come home. <laughs> we might as well go in the parlor and be comfortable. Yes, we might as well.
told you, Lily, he's, he's afraid of you. <laughs> Very well, man. All right, Sid. Coast is clear. Come on in. <laughs> oh, super experience. <laughs> Seeing a more beautiful sunset. Sad, uh, very sorry. Deeply sorry. All right. Soup? Of course it's soup. What did you do to us? You hurry up and eat. Right then? Soup beat. Nice, 
Sinny easy like. Got a bit tired, plenty in reserve. But all of a sudden I heard this sort of gasp from behind. Like this. Help! I turned around. It was red. His face all, all pinched and white. And he says meekly, he says, Help me, Nat. I got a cramp in my leg. Why am I telling you? I go mighty scared. And then I thought of the pile. If I could pull him to that, I could hang on to him till someone noticed us. But that pile, I was still, when I calculate, must have been 200 feet away. 250 feet. <laughs> well, what does that say? I've taken down the distance every time you saved Brad's life for 30 years, and the mean average of that pile is 250. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I have told that one one too many times, haven't I? <clears throat> but it's a good true story for kids, because it illustrates the dangers of, of being foolhardy in the water. Of course it's a good story, and you tell it whenever you have a mind to. Sid, if you were in any responsible condition, I'd give you a good piece of my mind for teasing that like that. Oh, getting old, I guess, Mother, getting to repeat myself. Someone ought to stop me. No such thing. You're as young as ever. Sid, you'd better go to bed for a while. That's what you'd better do. Bed. Yes. Maybe you're right. I, uh, I'm not at all well. In a very delicate condition, we are paying for a ball in our last <laughs> Will you shut up, you idiot, and go to bed? Immediately, immediately, if not sooner. But wait, there is still one duty I must perform. No day is complete for that. <clears throat> Lily, answer once and for all. Will you marry me? <laughs> no. No, I won't. Never. Right. And maybe it's for the best. <laughs> well, how could I forget the precepts taught me on mother's dying me? Sydney, she said. Sydney, my boy, never marry a woman who drinks. <laughs> Lips that touch liquor shall never touch yours. <laughs> Will you leave Lily alone and go to bed? Right. Good night, ladies and gents. We will meet by and by. In the sweet boom, boom, by and by, boom, boom, we will meet a that beautiful shore, boom, boom, <laughs> work and pray, boom, boom, why you may, boom, boom, we will meet in the sky by and <laughs> by. <laughs> He's a case if I ever saw one.
some notes, print everything you brought in. I'll tell him he's going to stop this nonsense. Up. Huh? Yes. Tell him. Don't just cry about the spilled milk. Sid's going to ruin. It's all because he loves her. And she eggs him on and keeps him deadly after her. He ruins his life. His lives. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him for drinking himself to death. I'd do the same thing if I were in his boots. Richard, you stop that talk. Drink, for you know not why you come nor go. <laughs> Drink, for you know not why you go nor where. Listen here, young man. I've had about all of your nonsense I can take for one day. You're growing too big for your size, it seems to me. You keep that damn fool talk to yourself, or you'll regret it. Mind you. Richard, I'm ashamed of you. That's what I am. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell do I care? I'll show them!
and spoiling the bad habits. A don would have been plenty. That's all right. I'm not a tight wad. Oh, that's the kind of talk I like to hear. <laughs> hey, listen, kid. Let me know if you see that bartender coming, will you? Girls are only supposed to smoke in the upstairs rooms, he says. All right, don't watch. <laughs> you want to smoke? You do smoke, don't you? Sure, I do. <laughs> <laughs> So 
to talk about her, is that it? I didn't say that. Just, trying to leak is kind of like, I mean, it isn't right for a nice girl like you to do those things. All right, Nick's on the couch. I just can't. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And, um, you know what you can do a lot with me for five dollars, but you can't reform me. <laughs> so you're faithful to your one and only A. What about her? That she's out in the bush right now with some guy. Don't you say that! Don't you dare! I have it your way and be a son. You don't know. I don't want to! Shut up about her, can't you? He'll have me run out of town. 
Why didn't you put me wise, you lousy tramp, you? Hey, I don't take that kind of talk from nobody. Oh, don't you? Who was it but you who told me to hand him dynamite in that fizz? Beat it, you, and beat it quick. Or I'll have you run in for street walking. Get the hell out of here. I'll get you for this. You thick mick. If I have to go to jail for it. Them lousy tramps is always get this dump and dutch. <laughs> Well, you're 
everlasting wrangling gives me a pain, you two. <laughs> Give us a rest. What could have happened to Richard? <laughs> Arthur, what's this I hear about you having such a great singing voice? But Rand was telling me he likes nothing better than to hear you sing. Why don't you ever give us folks here at home a treat? How about a song right now? Oh, I have been singing a lot tonight. Oh, I, well, I don't know if my voice can... All right. I'll do the best I can. <clears throat> Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I'm happy. Of course he does. 
understand anything about it, Father. I remember I'd come home in the morning after, come downstairs and eat breakfast with pork chops and fried onions. See, <laughs> if I were in your shoes, I'd keep still. Matt, now I, I told Richard all morning long that you were coming home at noon on purpose and, and that he could le he'd learn that you could be terrible stern when he did such awful things. Yeah. But you'd be careful how you go about it, Matt. You never would have done it, I know, if it hadn't been for that silly little dumb Muriel and her numbskull father. And then all of us making fun of him all afternoon. And, and you, you were so sharp with him and lost your temper before he went out after dinner. Oh, I can see that this is going to work around to where it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that, did I? Now, and here's another thing. You know as well as I do that he, that he could never have done it alone. Why, he wouldn't know how. Someone must have led him. By God, I'll make whoever it was regret it. Well, now, he wouldn't say there was anyone. Oh, the idea, boy, his age. Would you like me to go upstairs and tell him to get dressed that you want to speak to him? Yes. Yes, I can't waste all day talking to you. <laughs> Keep your temper, Matt. Say it. I'll take the same. <laughs> What'd you say, Matt? What I didn't say is, what'll you have? <laughs> you want to be of some help, but don't you? Then stay awake and use your brains. This is a damn sight more serious than Essie has any idea. Here's a note a woman left with one of the boys downstairs at the office this morning. Didn't ask to see me, just said to give me this. He said she looked like a tyrant. Your son got the booze he drank last night at the Pleasant Beach House. The bartender there knew he was underage, but thought it would be a good joke to get him soused. If you have any guts, you run that bastard out of town. What do you think of that? See if you recognize his handwriting. I resent the implication that I correspond with all the tramps around this town. <laughs> <laughs>
you say that anyway? Well, that's not because I think it's wicked. Or any such old foggy moral notion. It just didn't make me happy and funny like it does Uncle Sid. What's, uh, who's funny? <laughs> <laughs> just made me sad and sick. I don't see any sense in it. Well, now you're talking sense. But I'm not sorry I tried it once. How is your headache, dear? Would you like me to get you a bromo no, seltzer? No. You don't understand anything, Mom. Well, I understand this much, young man. It's your liver, that's what it is. <laughs> I'll take a good dose of salt tomorrow morning and no nonsense about it. What what time it's getting to be? I've got to go out. But Richard, you stay here. Remember, you are not to leave the house today. nearly nine. Am I sure she wrote nine?
No, it isn't either. Now, when you're really in love, think of something else, can't you? Um, last night, Pleasant Beach House. Belle. Get her. But I did go upstairs with her, even if she was pretty. Muriel's a million times prettier anyway. Muriel and I would go upstairs. When we were married, of course. That would be beautiful. Oh, think of something else, can't you? Recite something. I'm too young to live without desire. Too young art thou to waste this summer night. Gee, that's a peach. I wish I could write poetry. Darn it, I wish you'd show up. Well, it's nine o'clock, you can't see her anywhere. Maybe she got caught. She ain't hate to have to go home and catch help from the power without having seen her. Who ever heard of a woman being on time anyway? Here she comes. Gosh. I must have let her know I'm so tickled. If women are too sure of you, they, they treat you like slaves. <laughs> let her suffer for a change. Oh, dear. Oh, hello. We sit nine already. <laughs> I'll have to be waiting right here at the end of the path. Dick, you come here to me. I'm afraid to go out there. There you go again. Always scared of life. Dick, Laura, I do think you've got an awful nerve to say that after all the risks I've run making this date, and then sneaking out. You didn't take the trouble to sneak any letter to me, I noticed. No, because after your first letter, I thought everything was dead and passed between us. No, but you didn't even care one little bit. I was a fool ever to come here. I've got a good notion to go right home and never to speak to you again. Wait, Muriel. If you know how heartbroken I was by that first letter, and how darn happy your second letter made me, I don't believe you. I swear. Well, then all right. I'll believe you. <coughs> You're pretty tonight, Muriel. It seems like ages since we've been together. I'm glad it makes you happy. I'm happy, too. Won't you let me kiss you no, now, please? No, you must Don't. Aren't you yes. ever going to let me? I will. Sometime. When? Soon. Maybe. Tonight, will you? I promise. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But remember, you've promised. Come down and sit with me on the boat. Well, all right. Only I can't stay only a few minutes. You can stay a little while, can't you? A little while. But I've got to be home in bed again by 10 o'clock. You still have lots of time to do that. Dick, you've no idea what I went through to get here tonight. I had to get all undressed and into bed. And then Ma came up and I pretended to be asleep. She went down again. I got up and dressed in such a hurt. I must look a sight, don't I? No, you, you look wonderful. And then I sneaked down the back stairs. Dick, you don't realize how I've been punished for your sake. You don't know what I've been through for you. What I'm in for, for sneaking out tonight, staying away all day, what I did last night, or what your letter made me do. What did my letter make you do? It's too long a story. And let the dead pass, bury its dead. <laughs> Only this in the past. Oh, I can't tell you, but I'll catch a pocket to hold of me. Begin at the beginning and tell me. Well, after your old man, you, your father left our place last night. I got holy hell from Pa. And on top of that, to torture me more, he gave me a letter. And I thought your love for me was dead. I just wanted to die. I sat and brooded about death, and finally I made up my mind and killed myself. Dick, you didn't! I thought <laughs> she'll be sorry she ever ruined my life. <laughs> you ever had. I'd die too. Honest, I would. But suicide's an act of a coward. <coughs> I said to myself, she wasn't worth it. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> you know, if it wasn't that first letter, you wouldn't have been worth it, would you? But I told you. And I thought, you. I'll prove women. They're all alike. And I thought, why shouldn't I just drown my sorrows and forget her? You know, I had $11 saved up to buy something nice for your birthday. But I thought, 
She's dead to me now. And why shouldn't I just throw it away? You know, I still nearly got five left. I could buy you something nice with that. What do I care about presents? You tell me what you did. Well, after it was dark, I sneaked out and went to a little dive I know about. Dick Miller, I don't believe you. You're asking me down to Pleasant Beach else if I didn't. They won't forget me in a hurry. Well, that's a terrible <laughs> place. Possibly ought to be closed by the police. I said it was a dive, didn't I? <laughs> they led me into a secret room behind the bar. And uh, there wasn't anybody there but a, a Princeton senior I know. And he had two chorus girls with him from New York. And they were all drinking champagne. Dick Miller, I hope you didn't notice. I noticed one of the girls. She was looking at me. <coughs> she had strange looking in her eyes. She asked me if I would, wouldn't come and have drinks with them. She must have been a nice thing. Her name was Belle. She had long golden hair. It kind of burns and stings you. I bet it was dyed. She kept smoking one cigarette after another. But that's nothing for a chorus girl. She was low and bad, and that's what she was. So she couldn't have been a chorus girl. And her smoking cigarettes proved it. And then what happened? <laughs> Champagne and I got in a fight with the barkeep and knocked him down because he insulted her. I don't see how it could insult that kind. And why did you fight for her? Why didn't the Princeton senior? Um, he was too drunk by that time. And were you drunk? Well, only a little then. Oh, it was much worse later. I was on the verge of a delirium tremens. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't see you. I hate people who get drunk. I'd have hated you. <coughs> but what happened with that bell? After you... But before you went home. Well, we just kept drinking champagne, and she came and sat in my lap and kissed me. Oh. Oh, but it was only in fun. Did you kiss her? No, I didn't. You did, too. I didn't. You're lying, and you know it. And here I was, right at this time, not able to sleep, crying my eyes out. Well, you were... I hate you. I wish you were dead. I never want my eyes on you again. And this time I mean it. Wait, Mira, please, listen. Let me go. If you don't, I'll bite your hand. Let me explain. Ow! All right, then go. I hate you, too. I'll go and see Belle. Then I can make it enough for both of you us. You better do what your pa thinks best. And I'd like you. 
happy to be at Yale. Poor you. Do you think he'll punish you off for? I don't know. I don't care. Nothing would have stopped me from seeing you soon. Not if I had to crawl over red hot coals. In my own soul's heart. More dear to me than my own soul. More beautiful than God. What's wrong to say that? Gosh, but I love you. I love you too. Shaw's a comical cuss, even if some of his ideas aren't crazy. I can see you're being corrupted by those awful books, too. No, no, there's something to them. That Rubai out of Omar Khayyam, though, I read that over again. I liked it better than I did before. I'm certainly glad Mildred told us where Richard's gone. If she hadn't, I'd have worried my heart sick out again tonight. But, but now it's all right. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Just because we know he's all right tonight doesn't mean last night's wiped out. He's still going to be punished for that. Well, if you ask me, he's had about all he deserves. I told you that he said he'd never do it again. It doesn't make him feel happy and funny like it does Sid. So he doesn't see anything in it for him. Well, he's got that goober driven into his skull. I don't know but what I'm glad it all happened. Still, he can't do such things and go stop free. Now, I'm going to have to punish him. I'm going to tell him he can't go to Yale. Not go to Yale? Well, I guess he can go to Yale if all our other children can have the benefit of a college education. You're not going to be to Yale. Hey, I said I'd tell him that now. Bluff. And then later on, if he behaves himself, I'll change my mind. Well, if that's all. <laughs> Kids and so on. 
I don't think any of that's going to bother anybody anymore. Well, here comes Richard. Hello. Hello, Richard. Hello, son. Turned out to be poison ivy, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Well, you needn't look so upset. I'm not going to give you a temperance lecture. That'd bore me more than would you. And even after all this happened, I still give you credit for having brains. I know. I was a darn fool, Pa. You sure were. Not only a darn fool, but a downright stupid, disgusting fool. It was bad enough to let me and Arthur see you like that. But to appear that way before your mother and Mildred. And I wonder if Muriel would still think you were so fine if she ever saw you the way you looked and acted then. That settles the booze end of it. There is something a little more serious I want to talk to you about. What about that tart you went to bed with last night at the Pleasant Beach House? You know. But I didn't. If they told you about her down there, they would have told you I didn't. I gave her five dollars, so she just let me out of it. Honest. <laughs> well, how did you meet this lady anyway? I couldn't tell you that, Pa. I'd have to snitch on someone. You wouldn't want, wouldn't want me to do that, would you? Uh, no, no, I suppose I wouldn't. Well, I believe you, and I, I guess that settles that. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> listen here, son. It's about time you and I had a serious talk about certain matters pertaining to, well, now that the subject's come up with its own accord, it's a good time to... <laughs> no use procrastinating any further. <laughs> so here goes. Richard. <laughs> you have now come to the age when, well, you're a fully developed man, in a way. Uh, it's only natural to have certain desires of the flesh, put it that way, uh, <laughs> pertaining to the opposite sex. Certain feelings and temptations that will want to be gratified. You want to gratify them. It's wrong, maybe. But what can you do about it? when you, uh, went to, I mean, I mean, girls that there's something doing with. Well, lots of them are pretty. And it's only human nature. Oh, don't think I'm encouraging you. <laughs> if you can stay away from them, all the better. Here's what I'm driving at, Richard. Your whole life could be ruined if you So, darn it, you just got to know that... <laughs> but hell, I'm sure you boys talk about this all the time among yourselves, don't you? You probably know a lot more about it than I do. Look, I never had anything to do with such women. And it'd be a damn sight better for you if you don't either. I never would, Pa. Well, I don't see how you could think. Now, when I love Muriel and we're going to get married, that's the talk. By God, that's the talk. I'm proud of you when you talk like that. Bob, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, how are you going to punish me? Well, I guess I was sort of forgetting about that, wasn't I? Well, I thought of telling you you, you couldn't go to Yale. But don't I have to go? 
Cheetah's great, Pa! <laughs> Young dream. What is it that Rubiat says? Yet ah, that spring should vanish with the rose. Well, spring isn't everything, is it? Except for autumn. Autumn's got beauty too. And winter. 